my name is Dr. Celia Lam, and I am a lecturer in communications and media at the University of Notre Dame, Australia, in Sydney. And I'm here with John Rees, Associate Professor of International Relations, at, also at the University of Notre Dame, Australia, in Sydney. So, John, we're here in this rather interesting classroom space to talk about celebrity um, as a field of study and as applies to our two very different discipline areas. So, how does celebrity intersect with your field of study, international relations and politics? This might be a surprise to people that international relations scholarship is looking at this issue of celebrity. One of the uh, phenomena that we've seen, I guess, in a post-Cold War world is the role of uh, global celebrities such as uh, George Clooney or Angelina Jolie or uh, Bono from U2 being very high profile faces thinking about uh, issues of global and social change. And so there are some scholarly debates about whether this is a good thing, whether this is a bad thing, whether there's an indifference about this. And so international relations scholarship in some sense is trying to work out how these Hollywood actors or musicians or sports stars are political actors on the stage of world affairs. So are there various schools of thought or are there various, as you mentioned, differing opinions about the, so the efficacy and, and the significance of these actors? You might imagine, Celia, that there's this full spectrum of views. Uh, there's a very critical view. I'm thinking of the work of um, Ilan Kapoor, for example, uh, celebrity humanitarianism, uh, where Kapoor casts uh, celebrities uh, particularly Hollywood celebrities and musicians as uh, opportunists that are looking for another stage and that their involvement actually reinforces inequality even though they might be fighting for uh, something other than that because they're very wealthy, they're very privileged and they have access to a global stage that uh, the majority of the world and particularly the world's poor do not. And so it's a reinforcing of the problem from Kapoor's perspective. Someone like Dan Brockington takes a more nuanced perspective. He sees the role of celebrity as involved in this manifestation of what we would call post-democracy, which is the illusion of involvement. If people um, are uh, putting uh, posts up, comments up, social media uh, tendency to perhaps create the illusion of involvement, uh, celebrities can tap into that through a uh, popular base of fans who can see that someone such as Angelina Jolie or George Clooney, for example, are involved in an issue of social change and they might respond to that. However, Brockington says that this may be more elusive than real in terms of that uh, celebrity bringing about and engaging in social change. Who do they belong to? They belong still to the global elites. So this whole intersection of democracy in a thick sense and post-democracy in a thin sense, that celebrities feed into this uh, thinner sense of democratic involvement. There are scholars who also engage in a more positive view of the role of celebrities as global actors that are working within the interests of the state system of diplomacy and also challenging states and other actors that are contravening humanitarian norms, for example. A very positive role that someone who's famous can bring to light and bring to bear within a very rapid and often a brutal media cycle an issue that might not otherwise hit the, uh, you know, the airwaves and the screens. And so there's a deeper sense of positive involvement and a more normalised sense that, so what if an actor or a musician or a soccer player hops up and uh, advocates for an issue of social change. Why should this be exotic? Why should they not have a voice and become part of that tapestry of voices in global politics? So you mentioned a few types of celebrity, uh, actors, musicians, um, and sports stars. Do you feel that there is a difference in what a celebrity could bring to the international stage, depending on what sort of celebrity they are? Depends on what sort of celebrity they are, and how they engage in the issue that they do. For example, Lillian Furman was a very uh, famous and is a very famous global football star. He uh, was part of the 1998 World Cup, the French team. And uh, Thurman, who's from an African heritage, speaks very clearly and strongly 
through the platform of his success about the uh, needs of African communities in Europe and particularly in his home country of France. And so there's a critique that happens there, Thurman using his fame to question power. On the other hand, there are those celebrities that also model personally through their own journey various issues, such as Angelina Jolie's very well documented issues of health and uh, when she comes onto the global stage and uh, announces that she's having a double mastectomy and we know that global health uh, reports suggest that there's a very high uptake for women across the world to suddenly have that once again placed on their radar. That becomes a modelling, as it were. On the other hand, there could be a problem, particularly in relation to Hollywood actors, and it doesn't relate to Hollywood per se. I'm not going to take a cheap shot at Hollywood because that's just too easy for scholars mm. to uh, do. Um, there's one issue, though, that relates to the broader context of American politics, which in our present moment is very polarised. Diplomacy requires middle ground very often, a tempered voice, and sometimes celebrity advocacy, which can be very strident and sometimes look a little bit, dare I say, politically tribal, can be less effective. So it's, always, it's almost this sense of politics um, may not fit or sit as comfortably with a celebrity, um, with celebrity activism, than say a focus on social issues or health issues or, or, or something of that ilk. I guess it may depend on where the celebrity is placed. If the celebrity is placed at the forefront of an issue, mm. there's some studies that suggest that uh, the efficacy and the long-standing nature of that campaign that they're involved in, if it's dependent on them becomes more limited. Mm. But if they're already coming into something which has momentum, such as the United Nations Development Program or a global advocacy issue on a humanitarian crisis, such as in Darfur, then they're adding their uh, voice of fame, as it were, to a momentum that's already begun and to a process that is much larger than them. Mm. And I think, personally, from a scholarly perspective, my intuitions are and I'm at the early stage of this as well, but my intuitions are that it's that second role that could be seen to be a positive role. One footnote that I would add to this though, everybody that we've mentioned and everyone that features in terms of celebrity uh, in this scholarship tends to come from the global north. Mm -hmm. And voices of the global south who are equally celebrities, and this is where I mentioned Lillian Thurman, the football player, because he transcends both the north and the south. African cultural heritage advocating for uh, migrant workers within France who's a superstar of French football. Now he embodies that full north-south and breaks the divide mm. and I think the more we see celebrities into the future from the global south advocating for those issues the more this scholarship becomes complex and quite nuanced. Well, I find it really interesting that you were talking about, especially Lillian Thurman, in what he embodies and what he personifies and represents, because it just strikes a chord with me um, in terms of some very early scholarship in celebrity studies, which were, again, looking at the symbolism around um, Hollywood, um, so celebrities in the, in the global north, Hollywood actors, and what they represented in terms of cultural values. Richard Dyer has written two quite famous books in the area of celebrity studies called Stars and Heavenly Bodies, in which he basically, you know, sort of breaks down how a celebrity figure can model, how they can represent um, and inspire through what they do. So there's, it's interesting that there is a parallel, shall we say, between sort of uh, media-based celebrity scholarship and the area that you're sort of walking towards or heading towards now. That's really interesting that you say that because uh, in one sense, in looking at the politics of a globalised world, we're talking about both the transcendent nature of celebrity to cross boundaries, to be global, to be instantly recognisable, regardless of where you are. But in the same sense, there's been a very positive retrieval of the importance of space. So I think about somebody like Kim Kardashian. She's globally recognised, and yet she's also a face for the Armenian community. And so these issues become very important, based in the West, and yet a small Caucasus-based nation from where she comes is also one who owns her, most recently 
having gone back to Armenia and, and been fated as a v very welcomed guest, but also owned as part of the Armenian community. Armenian nationalism is therefore affirmed in some sense by the presence of the Kardashian name. And so there's this complex intersection between celebrity as a global brand and the very deeply contextual politics that different celebrities feed into. And so uh, one of the uh, very interesting intersections between the global and the local can be seen through this notion of celebrity. Can I ask you about symbolism? Certainly. The changing scholarship around symbolism, which comes from many different disciplines. Is there a changing face of symbolism and the appropriation of celebrity to symbol as the scholarship is uh, unfolding in media studies? Well, the, the, the scholar I mentioned before, Richard Dyer, who basically was sort of the pioneer of this, the notion that you could consider celebrities in a semiotic sense as symbols and signs who represented um, various cultural values to personify and reaffirm these particular cultural values. And he was writing in the late 1970s, early 1980s, so not that, not that long ago. Um, and in the time since, I think the scholarship has become a lot more nuanced. Um, in terms of what a celebrity figure can represent and how audiences respond to the symbolism of a specific celebrity figure. Um, yes, they can respond to how um, media constructs a celebrity persona, I either agree or disagree, as is the case with um, most current trends in audience studies, is not to follow the encode-decode model of, of um, Hall, but to look at audiences in a more nuanced perspective and look at audiences' uh, sort of uh, choice in agreeing or disagreeing with certain values that may be ascribed or inscribed into um, the symbolism of a celebrity figure. And a recent study that I found was um, really looking at how fans of specific celebrity figures choose which symbolism they align themselves to as a means to vicariously express their own um, thoughts on a particular issue. Charles Sokol um, produced a paper in which he, he examined the websites of Oprah fans, who has a lot of interests and advocates for a lot of different um, aspects of, uh, of sort of living, one of which is um, increased literacy. This particular fan's website was dedicated to Oprah's book club. Uh, this is when she was still uh, hosting the Oprah show before she moved on to her own Not running her own channel. entire her own, channel. Yes, her own channel. And um, this website, out of all of the other characteristics that are attributed and associated with Oprah, focused on this one aspect. Sukop's argument is that um, this particular fan is, through Oprah, expressing his or her own attitudes towards literacy. So instead of saying, I support literacy or I advocate for increased levels of literacy in probably the North American context, um, they're saying, I agree with what Oprah says, which actually is quite similar to this idea of modelling that you mentioned before. So in terms of the symbolism, the work is getting a lot more nuanced, especially on the reception um, side of the equation, shall we say. That sounds so interesting. One of my final questions, I suppose, for you is uh, what, what might the future hold? Where, where do you think uh, celebrity, uh, the focus on celebrity and the focus on fandom might head from your uh, scholarly perspective? Well, I'm quite interested and quite excited to, to see that there is an increase in what Matt Hills and Henry Jenkins, scholars in media and fan studies, have termed the ACA fan, the academic fan. Um, and I would put myself in that. Are you an ACA fan? I am certainly an ACA fan. Um, I am fans of quite a, lot of, uh, quite a lot of things, quite a lot of popular cultural media products, um, quite a lot of television shows, and I have quite a lot of guilty pleasures as well. But I, I won't ask. <laughs> don't yet, yeah, don't ask, don't go there. But they are all very good. This is the professional sort of, um, the professional problem we have, I suppose, as academics, is that we're always, our, our academic mind is always on. So anything I sort of really become engaged with as a fan, I sort of switch on the academic hat or put on the academic hat and think, what is motivating my engagement and what is happening around me? And I think it is a benefit, um, to, it, you know, regardless on what your opinion is of the pervasiveness of social media and the internet, I think it is a benefit to have all of those resources out in the public. 
um, to give a lot of visibility to the way that fans and audiences are interacting not only with celebrity um, but with the media products that they are fans of, whether it is giving them specific nicknames or whether it is um, highlighting various aspects of their personality that the fan wishes to advertise and perpetuate. And it has enabled a lot more nuanced, detailed study of, of audiences. Um, so audience study, I think, in relation to celebrity is, is going to be going down a more nuanced uh, tradition, a, a nuanced path, a nuanced trend. So I think that's quite exciting. So um, thanks for this chat, John. Yeah, thanks, Celia. It's quite interesting to see how much crossover there is between our two, quite different, you would think. Other people's um, nice. disciplines sound often so much more interesting than one's <laughs> own, but it is true that we've got some interesting cross-section. There are many uh, dots that we've joined today in terms of uh, this notion of celebrity across media studies and its cognate areas and international relations and its cognate areas. And, um, we should keep this conversation going. I think there is certainly a lot of other conversations to be had out of this. Thank you, John. Thank you.